Hey guys, Shane here. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through how I like to paint and weather my olive drab vehicles. So taking this Asuka Model M4A1, we're going to start by applying a pre-shade. And for this, we're going to take some Tamiya NATO Black that I've about tinned 50-50 with some Tamiya Lacquer Tinner. And this is just going to add a little bit of shading to our model. So I have pre-primed this model with a little bit of Mr. Surfacer 500 or 1500, I believe in this case, and that's just out of a rattle can. And I'm just gonna start applying this color in some fairly thin layers, just around any area I want to add a bit of shadow to. And you can just see I've slowly built this up and this is just gonna give us some different tones to start applying subsequent layers of olive drab on top of. So really what I'm doing here is I'm just framing different details. So any type of engraved detail or any time there's like a panel line, I just run a little bit of this NATO black over that just to emphasize it. So with the pre-shade allowed to dry, we're going to start working on our olive drab layer. And for this, we're going to be using some AK Interactive's Real Color. So this is a lacquer-based paint system. And we're going to start applying with our darkest color first. In this case, it's going to be olive drab uh, Real Color RC026. So this is a really deep and rich olive drab color. And this is going to be our first base coat. So I'm going to thin this down roughly 60% uh, Tamiya Lacquer Thinner to paint. And I'm just going to switch my uh, airbrush pressure down to about maybe 25 PSI. And I'm going to slowly start building up this paint. So this is quite a, a deep and rich olive drab color. And this is just going to be our first base layer. And it's also going to act as our, our, kind of our shade layer. Now the trick here is put down small amounts of paint at a time. So I don't, I don't want to completely lose the pre-shade. So I'm going to start working around the pre-shade, leaving it around the edges and just adding small amounts of paint and just slowly building it up. The nice thing about these lacquer paints is that they have a lovely kind of transparent uh, element to it. So it does take a few layers to build up a nice, strong and consistent coat, which is perfect for using pre-shades. Also, since this is a mine roller vehicle, uh, I'm going to start applying the exact same techniques to the uh, various different parts of the mine roller assembly. We're not going to be focusing too much on this because it's easier to demonstrate my painting and weathering uh, technique on the tank itself. So with the olive drab allowed to dry, we're going to start adding our first highlight color. And for this, we're going to be using olive drab faded. This is real color 024. And I'm going to, again, just purge my airbrush and tin this down exactly the same way, about 60% lacquer thinner, the paint, and again at 25 PSI. Now, I tend to kind of go in a lateral up and down motion when I'm doing this, and this is, and this is to replicate kind of the sun that's starting to bleach the paint, it's starting to get a little bit lighter. And once more, we're gonna keep some of that darker olive drab colors in some of the more recessed and shadowed areas, just to create some nice, color variation 
Now we're not doing proper modulation as such because I'm not really a big fan of it, but we're just going to um, focus this faded olive drab color into the center of panels and kind of work our way out and then feather out basically that we pull back on the amount of paint as we work our way towards some of the edges and corners, thus giving us a lovely um, graduation of highlight to shadow. Now this is my first time using the uh, AK Real Colors. So I have used lacquer based paints before, but these are fantastic. And you can use either uh, the Real Color Tinner for it or, or Mr. Self Leveling Tinner or the Tamiya Lacquer Tinner, but it has to be a solvent or lacquer based tinner, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. So you can kind of see that I'm just tracing some of these elements, so whether it be the curve of the turret on the turret roof, just kind of picking out some of the sh shapes of these different pieces or focusing here on the applique on the cheek of the, the turret. So with the first highlight layer allowed to dry, we're going to take some real color ochre, or 016 should I say, and I'm going to mix this roughly 60% faded olive drab to 40% ochre. Now you can, if this is too light or too dark for you, you can add or take as you so wish. And again, tint down roughly 60% tinner to paint. I like to keep my paints a little bit on the tin side. And I'm going to be very careful and just start focusing this lighter color onto the more pronounced detail. So you can see here I'm focusing in on the applique plates on the top of the, uh, on the lovely cast hull of the A1. So I'm really kind of focusing on that lovely sweeping shape of the cast hull, as well as the top of the engine decks. So with the highlights allowed to dry, we're just going to start adding a little bit of weathering. And for this, we're just going to take some simple sponge uh, chipping method here. And I'm just going to mix up, um, I believe in this case, I took some Vallejo model color khaki and Russian uniform mixed to 50-50 to make uh, a lighter version of the base color. It doesn't have to be perfect to a uh, perfect match. And I'm just going to start working this along some of the leading edges. Nothing too crazy. And inside those areas that we apply the lighter green to, we're just going to take some Vallejo German camo uh, black brown and again just stipple this in to that area just to represent deeper chips going down to the base steel down below. I only really focus this on the hatches and in this case the actual um, rollers on the mine clearing assembly itself just because I felt they would kind of get a bit bet up. It's really up to you how far you want to go with this. Um, you can go completely insane, spend weeks and weeks uh, chipping a vehicle or just do a small amount in an afternoon and you know still be totally fine it's really up to, up to yourself how far you want to go so sticking with the mine rollers i'm just going to come back in here now with a little bit of ak gen 3 acrylic paints in this case just their their steel color i think it's actually gun metal gray and i'm just going to carefully cut in the exposed metal here on the edges of the mine rollers as these are actually just untreated steel So with that allowed to dry, we're going to start adding our decals. And in preparation, we're going to add a gloss coat. So I tend to gloss coat for my decals. You don't have to do this. I just got into the habit of doing this. And for this, we're just going to take some real color gloss varnish. Again, tin down with a little bit of Tamiya lacquer thinner. And I'm going to apply about two or three light coats, just allowing each coat to sit for a few minutes before I apply a new fresh layer. So once 
the furnish has been allowed to dry for 24 hours, we're going to start adding our decals. And I'm just taking some spare decals from my Tamiya and Asuka spares, and I'm just going to do some generic fecal numbers and allied stars. So I'm just going to take some Microsol. So there is Microsol Micro Set. I just tend to use Microsol as both the set and solution and fixer. I just use it for both jobs. And I'm just going to um, prepare the surface by applying a little bit of the Microsol onto the surface of the model I want the decal to sit on. And then just very gently, I'll just move it into place and make sure everything is lined up the way I want it. And then I'll just start applying a few thin coats of Microsol on top of the decal and I'll just leave it overnight. The, de the decaling of this Sherman took me about maybe two days just to allow the decals to actually sit down and conform to the different textures and cast textures on the turret and on the hull. Then come back in with a little bit more Microsol and with a very soft bristle brush, I just push the decal into the model surface just to help it conform and also try to take out any air bubbles or wrinkling. And once they're allowed to dry and set, I'm just going to apply a very thin coat of gloss varnish over my decals. Again, this is optional. This is just how I do it. And this just helps prevent silvering and protect the decals for the next step, which is going to be the oil weathering. So in this case, we're going to be using oils from 502 Octylon. Now, we're really going to be using just a couple of colors. But I'm going to talk you through the different steps. So we're going to prepare our model surface, again making sure that all our varnish is allowed to dry and cure fully, so at least 24 hours in between steps. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of artist grade white spirits, and we're going to start applying a dot filter on top of it. So in this case I'm just going to take some white, and just start applying some dots here. I'm going to take some little bit of ochre, again from 502 Octylon. And then just take in a white bristle brush here that's been moistened in white spirits. I don't want the, the brush sopping in the stuff, just, just a small amount of white spirit on the brush. I'm gonna start pulling these dots in a, one direction, either up or down. And this is going to start replicating fading and atmospheric weathering on the, on the actual paint. So it's like sun bleaching, rain marks, other types of streaks. Now it looks a bit garish right now, but the trick is not to panic. Just keep feathering out these um, streaks until they become fainter and fainter. And then once they've been allowed to sit for a couple of minutes, they're still wet, but I'm just allowed a few minutes for them to kind of firm up. I'll just take a wide, very soft bristle brush and very gently begin to feather. And just blending these streaks back until they become very faint. And the trick here too is just to work in sections. So don't try to do everything in one go. And this is a really simple but very effective weathering um, strategy here. You can do really anything you want with it and make any variation you wish. And you can use really any colors you want. Um, I always just tend to use things like light greens, ochres and whites for all of drab. Now another little simple technique is to use kind of oil renders. And this is just a way of just applying the oil paint straight out of the tube. In this case I'm taking 502 Octylon Industrial Earth. And I'm just going to paint small amounts of it into some of these sharp corners. And just taking a brush that's been dipped in white spirit, again just moistened in white spirit, I'm going to start streaking this down in a single um, lateral motion, so just going on the vertical and we're pulling it down. And this is just going to create some really nice mud effect. Again, I'm just going to start rendering some of these other sharp edges again with our industrial brown or industrial earth. I just literally have the tube of oil paint open and I'm just taking it directly out of the tube. And then just taking a, a nice, in this case it's a slightly firmer bristle brush, I'm just going to start tapping this in and feathering it out. And it's just going to create a little bit of grime, a little bit of mud, and just make the fake look a little bit lived in. I'm also going to start painting around the edges here of the applique plates on both the hull and the turret. 
So you can see here, just coming in with our industrial dirt, and I just cut in a little bit of the, the oil paint directly from the tube, just to frame that detail. Then I come in with our so, somewhat stiff bristle brush here, and I just start tapping. And if it's too stark, I come back in then a few seconds later with our nice soft bristle brush here and blend it out. Another simple and really fun little way to add detail and definition is oil pin washes. So in this case, I'm gonna take some 502 Shadow Browns, one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna take some Winsor & Newton Artist White Spirit. You can use Sansador, you can use whatever type of um, oil tinner you want. And I'm gonna heavily thin it down on my palette here, really about maybe 90% white spirit or enamel tinner to, um, or mineral tinner, should I say, to paint. And I'm gonna create a wash. And I'm just going to focus this in, and I'm just going to focus this into any of the recessed details, any of the different type of bolt details here, like you can see here around the splash guard on the bow or 1919 machine gun, as well as flowing some of this wash into some of the well seams and engraved detail, just to help frame it and draw the eye. It's also a lovely way of creating a, a bit of um, grime to your vehicle. So once that's allowed to dry, we're going to start adding a dust layer. And for this, we're going to use some Tamiya Deck Tan. Now you can use any kind of dust color you want. I just had Deck Tan to hand. Now I've heavily, heavily thinned this down. This is about maybe 90% lacquer thinner to paint. I've turned my PSI down to about 15 and I made this paint very transparent. And again, I'm going in an up and down motion. I'm imagining how the dust would gather on this vehicle, catching along the fenders, along the lower hull. And I'm slowly going to build this up. I would recommend just tiny amounts of paint and slowly build it. Don't go too crazy with this. If you don't have the brush control, I would recommend maybe practicing on the underside of your tank hull just to get used to the, um, the feel of how this works. I'm also going to apply this color very, very faintly to the very bottom of the turret. So a bit of dust is going to kick, get kicked up and sit at the very foot of the turret. Hey guys, post-production Shane here, and I just realized I forgot to film a step. Now it's not a biggie, However, I just thought right now to let you know at this moment of the build, just after we added our dust coat, I added a matte varnish coat. And in this case, I used real colors, matte varnish. You can use any matte varnish you wish, but it is important that I mention now to matte coat your, uh, your finish right now. If you do so later after we add our mud and fuel stains, if you put a matte coat over that to kind of seal in and take back any of the glossiness out of the... Um, the preceding layers you're going to lose any of that nice kind of sheen or like glossy effect from say fresh mud or fuel stains so it's better just to do it now so i just thought i'd quickly mention that so sorry that i forgot to film that section and with that said on to the mud effects peace out so i really wanted to experiment adding mud and tick mud to my m4a1 mine roller and for this we're going to be taking some enamel effects from ammo of MIG as well as some from Vallejo, but we'll get to that as we get to it. So first we're going to do some splattering and for this we're going to take some of their fresh mud enamel effects and just taking an old cocktail stick and a somewhat frayed brush, we're just going to start loading our brush with this effect and we're going to start splattering it through the cocktail stick onto the lower hull. Now a really handier way to do this is to actually use an old airbrush needle if you have your hands on one and you just get a slightly nicer spray. Now I'm just using some Artist White Spirit once it's been allowed to dry to remove any of the uh, splatters I don't like or a little bit over scale. So I can just literally erase them and wipe them out. So now with the cleanup done and the splatter allowed to dry overnight, we're going to start building up our mud effect. And for this, we're going to start taking some wet mud, uh, Tick, which is basically got more um, heavier pigment and textured version of the enamel 
uh, mode effect and we're going to start just stippling this in so again this is from ammo of make ak and uh, the other weathering companies have their equipments so i'm going to start applying this really into the areas where the bogies are going to sit so i'm going to apply the uh, enamel effect quite thickly and stipple it in and then just taking some um, winter soil which is a pigment from ammo of make i'm going to start stippling the pigment into the still wet enamel effect and kind of mix them together and this is going to give us a lovely texture and it's going to create a nice kind of realistic mud effect it's quite simple to do as you can see we're only going to really be using three main products to do this you don't need too many different products to create an interesting mud effect If I don't like it, I can literally paint as I just done there, the wet effect enamel back over the pigment and then just stipple more pigment on top of it. You can literally do it in any sequence you like. You have a lot of options on how you want to do things. So the sponsons are going to get exactly the same. I'm just going to focus this heavy mud effect on the lower aspect of the sponson arms and the wheels themselves. Now, I would recommend using older brushes and brushes you don't mind sacrificing to the weathering gods because this form of weathering murdered quite a few of my brushes and I didn't really consider that at the time. So again, no, don't don't uh, use brushes you don't mind sacrificing. So I really want to build up some even thicker mud and for this we're going to come to Filejo and they have like acrylic based um, gels that are kind of textured to be mud and have like static grass. So this is their European mud. And I'm just going to build this up around areas where I really want the mud to have collected and compacted. And I want a lot of texture to help sell the effect. And this is a great and simple way of doing it. And once the acrylic paste is allowed to dry, so do leave it to dry for at least 24 hours, I'm going to take some of our fresh mud enamel effect. So this is the um, same one that we use for the splattering. And I'm just going to paint this into the dried acrylic. So this should be rock hard. Do not do it while it's wet or some weird things will happen. And I'm just going to basically reintroduce this slightly wet color. I'm not going to paint over the entire things. I'm going to leave some of the um, natural color of this um, mud uh, gel in place and this is just going to kind of help blend things together a little bit and maybe imply that some of the mud is somewhat dried some of this is fresher mud and like different things like that So it's also at this stage of the weathering process that I mated the upper and lower hulls together and mounted or placed our crewmen in place. So now the hull is totally glued and fixed in place. I had this, I had these left loose up until now, but however, it's time now to mate these together so I can continue weathering. So I want to add some fuel stains and engine grime to our engine deck here. So for this, I'm going to use some ammo of MIG uh, fuel stains. So this is a glossy effect. So again. If you're going to mac coat your, your fecal, do it before you do this step or you're going to lose this glossy effect. And I'm just going to paint small amounts of this around some of the fuel filler caps 
and any areas I feel that fuel or lubricant or fluids will build on the engine deck. Another little detail I really wanted to add, just to add a bit of visual interest, was a little bit of leaf scatter. So these, I believe, are just birch leaves. You can buy them from any like garden shop. Um, most weathering companies sell them as well. And I'm just going to take a little bit of AK gravel and sand fixer and just flow it in around these um, leaves that I've kind of just scattered over the hull. So these will lock them in place. So I just flow a little bit of it around. Again, this is a totally optional step. I just thought uh, it would add a little bit of visual interest to our vehicle, as well as kind of place it in kind of the um, late winter, early spring of 1945. This fixture will, once dried, will actually lock everything in place. However, it does give a little bit of a glossy finish once this fixture is allowed to dry. So I'm just taking a piece of card just to hide and protect the fuel stains because I don't want to lose the glossiness on them. And I'm just going to give them a coat or two of AK Real Color um, Matte Varnish. And that's just going to take away that weird residue as well as help lock them further onto the model. As well as a few leaves here on the top of the turret as well get the same treatment. Just a few coats of matte varnish. And with that, our project is complete. So I really hope you found it somewhat interesting about how to go about weathering and painting your olive drab allied vehicles. So this can apply to basically any bit of American equipment from World War II, whether it be a Jeep up to a tank. And as you can see, olive drab is actually a really interesting color to work with because it shows weathering and different types of... Um, ground effects really well so guys i really hope you found this interesting if you have any questions at all please just ask me in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them for you so thank you so much for watching guys happy modeling and i'll catch you in the next video Bye bye